Good morning. This is Sunday, March 27, the beginning of a new quarter, a new quarter in our study. And this quarterly we are, this quarter rather, we are going to be studying the book of Matthew. I encourage you to walk with me each morning as I go through the lesson. Lesson number one, entitled Son of David. Shall we pray? Father, we ask you to open our eyes that we might see wondrous things from your word. Be with us as we open your words, open our minds, open our hearts to love and to serve you. Oh, Father, we pray that you will walk with us. Forgive us of our sins, cleanse us from all unrighteousness, and save us in your kingdom with our bidding. In Jesus' name. Amen and amen. I'm going to sing the song, Open Mine Eyes That I May See. Right. I'm going to sing it one time and then I go straight into the, the study of the lesson. Illumine me, Spirit Divine. All right, we go together now. Open mine eyes that I may see glimpses of truth thou hast for me. Place in my hand the wonderful key that shall unclasp and set me free. Silently now I wait for thee, ready my God thy will to see. Open mine eyes, illumine me, Spirit divine. Open mine ear that I may hear. Voices of truth thou sendest clear, and while the wave not fall on my hair, everything fall will disappear. Silently now I wait for thee, ready my God thy will to see. Open mine hair, illumine me, Spirit divine. Open my mouth and let me bear gladly the warm truth everywhere. Open my heart and let me prepare love with thy children thus to share. Silently now I wait for thee, ready my God thy will to see. Open my heart, illumine me, Spirit divine. All right, very good. I go straight into the lesson now. Okay, for Sabbath afternoon, Sabbath afternoon says, um, read for this week's study, Matthew chapter 1, 20, 1 to 25, Mark chapter, 5, chapter 12, verses 35 through 37, Isaiah chapter 9, verse 6 and 7, Romans chapter 5, verse 8, John chapter 2, verse 25. 
Jeremiah 29, 30, and Matthew chapter 2, verses 1 to 14. The memory verse is Matthew chapter 1, verse 21, a well-known passage of scripture by all of us. He will save his people from their sin. Remember, we are looking at uh, lesson number one of the new quarter, March 26 to April 1. And the title for this morning is Son of David. Inspired by the Holy Spirit, Matthew began his book with a genealogy, but not with just any genealogy, but with that of Jesus Christ. And he began not only with a genealogy, but with one revealing some ancestor that most people would not necessarily like to claim as their own. Perhaps had himself somewhat of an outcast, Matthew could relate to that ancestry. After all, he was a Jewish tax collector who had sold out to the enemy and who actually paid Rome for the opportunity to sit there and tax his own Jewish people. Surely, he would not be a man beloved of his nation. Nevertheless, humans might look on the outward appearance, but God looks upon the heart. And no question, looking at Matthew's heart, the Lord chose him, a despised tax collector, to be among his disciples. And when called, Matthew accepted, giving up the life he had before for a new life in Jesus. Amen. Amen. Thus, Matthew followed his Lord, kept records, and one day he would give something back to his people and to the world. It would be a tax receipt. But instead, it would not be a tax receipt, but instead a precious account of the life of Jesus. Study this week's lesson to prepare for Sabbath, April 2. So that's the introduction, the Sabbath afternoon. Now for today, today's lesson, Sunday, March 27. The title for today is A Book of Genesis. A book of Genesis. This is the genealogy of Jesus Christ, the son of David. Matthew chapter 1, verse 1. This is the gene gen genealogy of Jesus, the Messiah, the son of David, the son of Abraham. Right from the start, Matthew called his work a book, from the Greek word biblos, which can mean a sacred writing, a book of the genealogy of the ancestry of Jesus. In fact, the Greek word translated genealogy, our generation, is from a word that can be translated genesis. Hence, it could be said that Matthew started his gospel with the book of Genesis. Just as the whole testament itself begun with a book about the creation of the world, Matthew ends the New Testament itself, starts with a book about the creation himself and about the work of redemption that only the Creator could accomplish. Question, what do these texts tell us, tell us about Jesus? In John chapter 1, 1 to 3, then Hebrew chapter 1, 1 to 3, Micah chapter 5, verse 2, Mark 12, 35 to 37. We're going to take them individually. So we go to John chapter 1, 1 to 3. The deity of Christ. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was in the beginning with God. All things were made through him, and without him 
nothing was made that was made. There you go. All right, so that's John chapter 1, 1 to 3. Let's look at Hebrew chapter 1, 1 to 3. Hebrew chapter 1, verses 1 to 3. That is God's supreme revelation. God who at various times and in various ways spoke in time past to the fathers by the prophets has in these last days spoken to us by his Son, whom he hath appointed here of all things, through whom also he made the worlds, who being the brightness of his glory and the express image of his person, and upholding all things by the word of his power, when he had by himself purged our sins, sat down at the right hand of the majesty on high. Next is Micah chapter 5 verse 2. We look at Micah chapter 5 and verse 2. Micah 5 verse 2, the coming Messiah, the caption. But you, Bethlehem Ephrata, Though you are a litter among the thousands of Judah, yet out of you shall come forth to me the one to be ruler in Israel, whose going forth are from an old, from everlasting. All right. And the final text here is Mark chapter 12, verses 35 through 37. The caption is Jesus questions the leaders. Mark. Mark. 12, 35 through 37. Then Jesus answered and said, While he taught in the temple, How is it that the scribes say that the Christ is the son of David? For David himself said, By the Holy Spirit, The Lord said to my Lord, Sit at my right hand, Till I make your enemies your footstool. Therefore, David himself called him Lord. How is he then his son? And the common people heard him gladly. Alright, so the question is, what do these texts tell us about Jesus? From the days of the from the days of eternity, the Lord Jesus Christ was one with the Father. He was the image of God. The image of his greatness and majesty, the outshining of his glory. By coming to dwell with us, Jesus was to reveal God, both to men and to angels. He was the word of God. God's thought made audible, according to Helen G. White, The Desire of Ages, age 19. The divinity of Christ, however, was not first and foremost in Matthew's mind, as in contrast to John. When we look at John chapter um, 1, verses 1 to, to, to 4, which says, In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was in the beginning with God. All things were made through him, and without him nothing was made that was made. In him was life. In him was the life. <laughs> and, and the life was the light of men. There you go. Where John's account of Jesus is. So, who immediately writes about the deity of Christ before going into the human side of Jesus? 
You can also look at John chapter 1 verse 14, which says, And the word became flesh and dwell among us, and we beheld his glory, the glory as of the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. Instead, Matthew's focus very much on Christ's humanity. Christ as the son of David, the son of Abraham. He then traces from Abraham the lineage of Jesus, his human ancestors, up to the birth of Jesus, all in the desire to show his readers that indeed Jesus of Nazareth was the Messiah, predicted in the prophecies of the Old Testament. Of course, family and ancestry are important. At the same time, as far as the gospel is concerned, our parents or grandparents or any of our ancestry is irrelevant. What instead is important and why? Let's look at Galatians chapter 3 verse 29. And if you are Christ, then you are Abraham's seed and heir according to the promise. The importance is that we are attached to Jesus Christ, that we are connected to Jesus Christ. And if you are Christ, then you are Abraham's seed and heirs according to the promise. So it doesn't matter what race we were born through. It doesn't matter what tribe we were born through. But as long as we accept Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior, we now become what? Abraham's seed, the seed of faith, the seed of the chosen. That's who we are. So we thank God for this morning. As we look at the, uh, the book of Genesis, as we go through this um, quarter lesson, lesson one is the son of David, and um, each day has its separate um, subcaption. All right, so it's good to be studying the word. Right, we close off with a short prayer and the singing of our theme song, Open Mine Eye That I May See. <clears throat> Father in heaven, we thank you so much, Lord, that the Bible records the, the lineage you came through. And it so gives us in that lineage very many individuals, Lord, who in the human natural high. We would not seem to recognize and not seem to even appreciate. But we are thankful, Lord, that you came to these lineage. This is telling us that uh, there is no one beyond scope of reaching. But you came to Rahab, their father, a prostitute, a lineage, oh God. We, you came to Ruth, their father. We thank you, dear God, for who you are and what you have been. We pray that you will help us to understand your word. And as we walk through the book of Matthew, we pray, Father, that we will be closer drawn to you. Even Matthew himself, being a tax collector, being rejected, he, he abandoned their Lord, his calling at first. But then receiving you was the greatest thing. He left his tax collector in to become a disciple of you. And he has given us such a record of your lineage. Bless us, Lord, and help us so that we might be who you want us to be, and that we will be saved in your kingdom. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Open my eyes that I may see. I that I may see, claim seed of truth, the hands for me. Place in my hand the wonderful key that will enclass and set me free. Silently now I wait for thee. 
Ready, my God, thy will to see. Hope and mine eyes illumine me, Spirit divine. I gotta go over this, I'm sorry about that. I never started the, the music from the start, so <laughs> it's my fault. Now the intro is being played. Open my eye that I may see. Here we go now. Open my eye that I may see glimpses of truth thou hast for me. Place in my hand the powerful key. That will unclass and set me free. Time violently now I wait for thee. Ready, my God, thy will to see. Open mine eyes, illumine me, Spirit divine. Open mine hair that I may hear Voices of truth thou sendest clear And while the wave not fall on my hair Everything fall will disappear Silently now I wait for thee Ready, my God, thy will to see. Open mine hair, illumine me, Spirit divine. Open my mouth and let me bear gladly the warm through everywhere. Open my heart and let me prepare Love with the children thus to share Silently now I wait for thee Ready, my God, thy will to see Open my heart, illumine me Read divine. Be a blessing, be a blessing as you go through this day. Remember, doesn't matter what lineage you came from, doesn't matter what your foreparents has done, who they are, what's important is that you meet Jesus wherever you are. And as you meet Jesus and walk with him, he will walk with you. Have a great and wonderful day. See you tomorrow morning. God's willing. Be blessed and be a blessing. Amen.